Hey everybody, welcome to Team Brothership. It's me, Mike, back again, uh, and we've got something of a, a different episode this time. Uh, I am here with Andy, the owner of the Materia Arcade in Worcester, Massachusetts. You should all come down and spend lots of money there. Uh, and we are here to talk about arcades. We're gonna do kind of a, a chatty episode this time as opposed to watching somebody stumble through a video game. So, uh, so yeah, Andy, why don't you introduce yourself? Thanks, Mike. Um, yeah, no, this is uh, Andy from... I'm the owner of Materia Arcade here in Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, we opened, We j actually just celebrated our one-year anniversary, so... It was exciting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it's, it's, it's great. We have 13 uh, arcade, full arcade cabinets now, and we also sell retro video games. Um, yeah, just kind of evangelizing the whole video game thing here in Worcester so yeah yeah it's um it's it's a neat setup too it's not a lot of arcades nowadays I feel like are the kind of barcade setup but this is like a little storefront in part of a, a little stretch of stores people can walk down um, hang out here for a while we actually just uh, we, you just booted out a bunch of people who had been here all night I know so I think they were gonna play smash for like another hour if I, if I, was, if I had let them but uh, they were excited to go to Burger King, so I think it's all I good. I mean, who, who wouldn't be? <laughs> who wouldn't be? Actually, it's good that Paul was going to join us for this episode, but then his kid got sick. But it's good that he's not here, because the last time he ate Burger King, uh, he almost died. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think same. <laughs> no, like you know, 12 years ago or something. But, yeah. Um, I'm jealous, though. I wish I could still eat like that, but whatever. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's interesting what you said about it being a neighborhood arcade, because I... I was actually trying to think back if I ever remembered going to an arcade like this, but I think all my arcade experiences back in the day were at malls or skating rinks, which are equally cool places to have arcades. But um, yeah, it's not a barcade, which I guess is kind of unique. Now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that definitely seems to be. There's a, there's another big um, arcade, a barcade in Worcester, uh, Free Play, that is also cool. But yeah, it's a very different vibe there there's something weird to me about being able to have like all the arcade machines being set to free play like <laughs> I, like that's awesome and i get it and it definitely i can attest that it makes it much easier to maintain the machines because the coin mechs are usually what break down yeah uh first if not the buttons and joysticks but <laughs> um i don't know it's weird i, I love free play and i love going to places like that but I also have nostalgia for putting a coin into a coin yeah. slot and yeah. hearing the you know the music that happens when you when you do that also I've never found drinking to make me better at video games for sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, no. actually usually a good uh, a good barometer for when it's time to stop drinking when yes. like it really becomes <laughs> a, a mess then it's like all right I think I've had enough yeah for sure I think it, it it, it helps get my wife to the arcade, but <laughs> beyond that. So uh, something that we talked about a little bit are, um, you know, these, these are all like your arcade cabinets that you've collected over the years. How did you, how did you first get into collecting arcade games? Yeah, so I actually never thought I would ever own an arcade cabinet. Um, obviously, you know, as a kid, you, you dream about owning one of these because <laughs> it's, it's this unattainable object that you could never fathom owning. Um, and I lived in a I lived in New York City for a long time, and I in an, in apartments. And, yeah, you know, yeah. Obviously, you're not going to have a arcade cabinet in a New York City apartment. And I was actually really into like portable gaming, and I would have like all my game, you know, my DS games, and 3DS <laughs> games, like all neatly stacked on a sh on like one little shelf. And that was like the footprint of my like video game yeah. collection. And then during the pandemic, I mean, I, this part I feel is kind of cliche. Like we were all looking for things, right? Sure. But I remember seeing this post on Instagram of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Konami cabinet. Oh yeah, yeah. And the the caption, I, I should look it up because I keep butchering this story every time I tell it. But it said something to the in the caption to the effect of. Brother, bro, or brotherhood. Uh, <laughs> I 
like, oh, now I'm totally going to mess this up. <laughs> yeah, it was something like friendships were forged by oh. complete strangers okay. while playing this game. And when I read that caption, it took me back to, I don't know, just being at a mall or a skating rink and playing this game and, you know, being the only one playing it. And then you get to, like, one of the bosses and you're, you're sitting there fighting Bebop and someone else like comes in and oh, like, helps yeah. you out like yeah. right there and then all of a sudden you guys are like in this together and you don't know who what the, who this kid is and you'll never see this kid ever again in your life um but you'll spend you know 30 minutes putting a few quarters into this machine and all of a sudden you know you're one of the teenage Mutant Ninja turtles <laughs> fighting alongside with yeah. your brother and and i don't know just that that type of camaraderie was something that I it was it wasn't that I missed it. It just it, it's something that means something. Yeah. That should s- still exist in the world. Yeah. That you don't get when you play like co-op on right. some game o- online, right? And I I don't even know like if sh- so for the sake of the mythology of Materia. So I went right onto Facebook and I started looking <laughs> up like arcade <laughs> machines on Facebook Marketplace, and I did find a Turtles machine like an hour from from here, and. I like immediately messaged the guy and because it was it was I could tell like he had it priced uh, fairly cheap for, even though I didn't know anything about arcade machines at the time in their in their value but I, I could tell it was kind of like undervalued and I immediately messaged him and I think I must have been like one of ten people trying to get it but he he saved it for me and I went and picked it up and that was the first one and then once I got that one I started looking at others and yeah. you know doing the whole like yeah. video game collecting thing yeah yeah. And then all of a sudden I had Teenage Ninja Turtles and Mortal Kombat 2. And then all of a sudden I had 1943. And then all of a sudden I had, <laughs> I don't know, a whole, a whole bunch of them. And they were in my garage. And then I moved them to like a basement space in a nearby uh, store. Uh, I met a guy who had like a big basement area he yeah, was running out. Yeah. And it kind of just snowballed from there. I, I don't think I realized that, um, that you had just started doing this like in the last few years I, I guess i had assumed that it was kind of longer than that. i mean i know you've been playing and collecting video games for longer than that but you know so there were a couple of uh rabbit holes i did kind of go down i there there's a really great video maybe i can find it and send you a link and you can put it in the caption sure about this guy who he had a, he had a bunch of videos about super guns and like taking pcb boards mm. of games and how to how to play those on tvs oh and he had yeah all these yeah. kind of like do it yourself uh, like how to play arcade games like at your house all these instructional videos on that and it was funny because this one video that uh, I kept I kept watching it over and over again I was like this is awesome I have to do this I have to do this and all the comments in the section were oh my god how many adapters do you need for this and that like why would anyone want to do this and I was like no no I want to do this like how come no one is interested in this and obviously there's a huge you know community of people that that are into that but that was kind of another thing so i was kind of buying pcbs okay longer or before i was actually getting sure. actual cabinets um but yeah um I, I i don't know i guess when we talk about arcades i'm also speaking from like the past as a child <laughs> to some sure. degree <laughs> oh yeah yeah no and i and i i um i agree obviously i have a robust history with arcades as well we actually had um i I don't know if we had any like storefront ones but we had it's too bad paul's not here um we had this weird one that there was like this sort of fairy tale themed very like low rent (laughs) amusement park that was a few towns over from where we grew up um like there was there was this big metal dragon that like actually breathes fire and i i can't imagine that that met appropriate state like you could climb on it and you'd, you'd be oh, wow. like you know a few feet away from like essentially a flamethrower wow um <laughs> yeah different time, different time. <laughs> but um but they had like if you went into the the actual little castle there so there was like the grounds of the cast like the keep of the the grounds of the castle were all these different little things and like a kind of chintzy roller coaster and and things um but uh if you went into like the castle keep, they had like a whole arcade in there. Nice. So we went in there a few times with um, like redemption games too, or and the, like yeah, like the, you mean the, like the ticket stuff? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They had like skee ball and the basketball yeah. thing. Um, 
But yeah, other, other than that, there was one in like a bowling alley that we went to all the time. Oh yeah, was, bowling alleys for yeah, sure. Yeah, bowling yeah, alleys. And uh, I don't know if it was a Chuck E. Cheese. It was it was something like a Chuck E. Cheese though. It, it was it was like a low rent Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> knockoff um, that had arcades and, and things like that too. Yeah. So it was funny. I think until I started collecting it myself, my last experience at a quote unquote arcade was at a Chuck E. Cheese where me and my best friend we were like we're, we're gonna beat the Simpsons we've never beaten this game we're gonna go <laughs> beat it there's one at this Chuck E. Cheese we just went in there with like 20 bucks and we're like let's do this and we played through the entire game and then we get to the end and the uh, the power went off and oh the yeah you told me there. that ah oh, that's terrible yeah it was pretty when, devastating when, when was that because I feel like they don't let you into Chuck E. Cheese's anymore unless As an you have adult. a kid yeah oh. I mean that's probably smart uh, but I, I, th- I was probably like, uh, I'm going to date myself now uh, it was definitely over 20 years ago okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah because I, I used to do I think I told you this story but I used to do um, Big Brother with this this kid okay. and one of the things that we did was we went to a Chuck E. Cheese when he was I did it for a long long time so when he was little when we first started out he wanted to go to Chuck E. Cheese and we went there and I remember it was like the most well for, first of all they, they stamp your hand um, when you go in and like they stamp the kids hand and they stamp you like they have this whole pile of stamps and so they stamp your hand and the kids hand with the same stamp so they make sure you leave with the same kid that you came oh, wow. in with <laughs> which like I, I get that I get that they want to keep you paired with a child but it does seem a little strange. Like, are you gonna be like, you gonna trade up right, while you're right. in there? Totally. Like, <laughs> like, let's find the kid who is whining the least. Yeah, I'll yeah, that one. Yeah, like, oh, this kid's really good at skee ball. Like, right. Sorry, Stephen. <laughs> I hope you enjoy your new life with that family. Um, but uh, I, I found the whole thing. Not, not just that. The whole thing very depressing because they like don't have arcade games anymore. Yeah, it's like it's all um, either you know, like you said, redemption games like Ski Ball and and stuff. Uh, but even that, it's mostly just like like cell phone games that have been blown up to arcade size, and you just like press a button and maybe you win some tickets. Yeah, all the all of the new the new like iteration of all of it is just un exciting like the way they look like it's they're just these huge monstrosities that are have so much like sculpted plastic yeah. on them and then like you said the games themselves are like cell phone games yeah and it's just there's something really weird about all of it and yeah. i don't know like i look at the the cabinets here at, at our arcade and I, I mean obviously they're the traditional looking ones but there's something like interesting about the shape of yeah. those right oh, like yeah. and i don't know I, the, the new stuff just doesn't i don't know when you look down when you when you look at all of them in, in a row in like profile and you see them there's just something about what that looks like and then when they're on and the screens are all like lit up and they're glowing i don't know and then you hear all the noise and everything like all, the new ones just don't have that same feel to it yeah yeah it it um, another time when I was with that kid, we went to uh, Dave and Buster's, and it was kind of the same thing. Like, I have they, never been to a Dave and Buster's. It wasn't great. Like they <laughs> they did have they had a big like kind of tournament set up Mario Kart cabinets where you actually yeah. got in and I've drove. Seen and them. Like that's I've seen cool. people playing them online and or um, young videos and things. And they had the the Jurassic Park one where you like climb into the little right. Jeep and you got the machine gun and that's cool. But yeah, everything else it it just felt like. They feel like casinos for children. Like it's, yeah. it feels more like gambling than it does. I mean, <laughs> obviously the old games were designed to take money away from you, but like you could, like they did involve a degree of skill. Yeah, yeah, and well, and even like the the cooperative play of it, like with like with turtles yeah. and whatnot. Like there was still this like shared experience you were having with right another human being. Yeah, um, but also the skill of it. I mean. I think in some ways that's like when you look back at video games as a whole it's kind of amazing that there were these like these adults in Japan who had this job of (laughs) developing these games and they took it very seriously right yeah and they came up with some amazing things and then this whole phenomenon just like kind of came out of all of that like 
when you really look at all the pieces of why we even have video games and the whole video game industry, it's like, it's kind of a miracle that it ever existed, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, re it's really fascinating. Um, so another thing, I mean, I, I feel like this is a question almost not worth asking, but like, when, when did the idea of collecting games morph into having an arcade? Or opening an arcade, I should say. That's a good question. I mean, I, I would assume, <laughs> I would assume it's just like, oh, I don't have enough space to put any of these. Like, I guess I'm going to open an arcade. That is definitely just, like so. This is somewhere to live. Well, so the <laughs> space that I had them in after my garage, uh, I, I got a good deal on the space, but it was kind of a glorified like storage unit to a degree. But yeah. I, 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 there was room to work on them. People could come down there. People could also visit the space, so it wasn't it wasn't like a storage space in that regard. But people could come down there and play the games. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I've it's weird. Like with with console games, I was very me like meticulous about how I wanted them to look mm -hmm. and like having them complete in box or you know needing them to be. Uh, you know, perfect, or you know, maybe this was a game I kept actually kept from my childhood. Yeah. Is that still in good shape or whatever? And I was very like into the quality of it. But the arcade cabinets are like at the complete other end of the spectrum, <laughs> unless you're like a, you know, restoring them like right. perfectly yourself. But then when you look at the ones that have been restored, they don't. They look weird too. Yeah. Like they look yeah. off. They look like they had no life. Yeah. And. Um, when I started getting the cabinets, there were things that I wanted to fix or, you know, to touch them up or, you know, sure. clean the, polish them up a bit. Yeah. But then I realized, like, what I liked about them was that they were kind of broken in. <laughs> and that bro breaking in process, you know, requires them to be played. And right. there's a connection there to, like, having them available to be, to, to be played, right? And... I don't know. I, I don't. To be honest, like it just it kind of seemed inevitable in a way that I didn't even think about it or question it. Like it just it was like something I couldn't even control. It was like I, maybe I wasn't even in control of it. I just, I just like did it. I don't, I don't even know. The games, yeah, it was, it was like Field of Dreams, but with it really games. was. No, no, that's a great analogy because I kept like I definitely kept thinking about that <laughs> over and over again. Um, though I don't know if anyone. Of a certain generation, even has yeah. that movie. I don't know. I, I people know Field of okay. Dreams. If you build it, they will come. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like that's seeped into popular consciousness. Yes. Um, well, I've built it, and they've started to come. And <laughs> yeah. I hope more come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this is. Um, you know, you you've moved. Obviously, you were you were in a smaller space originally, and now you're in kind of a, a bigger. Um, yeah. A little more open space. So after the basement space when my lease was up in that in that spot it actually would have been a really great spot to open up like kind of an underground arcade but there was no like public facing like right side like part of it so no one yeah. even knew i was there right so i ended up moving around the corner to a spot it was literally the only retail play retail uh space available for like under a thousand dollars anywhere in Worcester and but it was literally like 190 square feet and I somehow had like 10 arcade full-size arcade cabinets in there but, it, was, it was snug yeah it was very snug I feel like but everyone was cool with it right yeah. like everyone still had a good time and there were still like ways to have conversations with this person over here about video games and there would be a group of 10 people over here doing whatever and I don't, it, it was but it was snug but we moved in July to a bigger spot, just two doors down. Um, that's also, it's still a, kind of on the smaller side, but um, it definitely provides more space for different things. Yeah, I mean, it feels like it feels like a real arcade. Like you can walk around in here. You can, you know, yeah. people can play different games that are not in each other's laps. Well, so my, my original idea for the arcade was to get the tiniest spot because I knew I couldn't afford anything big. So I was going right. to get the tiniest spot I could find. And I was going to call it Cramped Quarters. <laughs> and my wife, That's awesome. and my, my wife was like, "This was in the pan during the during the pandemic." Yeah. I was like, "You cannot open an arcade in the pandemic and call it cramped quarters." <laughs> that's that's true. And so that I was like, true. "Yeah," I was like, "You're right." But now I don't know. I kind of feel like that that original concept was like, 
Yeah, the, the timing might not have been ideal, <laughs> but that's that's a pretty awesome name. I'm, I'm a little, I like Materia, I like your, your sign and yeah, the logo yeah. and everything, but uh, yeah, I'm a little disappointed it's not cramped quarters. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I don't know, it's, it was weird, it was, there's all the, there's actually a really great, uh, there's a forum for uh, like people in the arcade community called Killer List of Video Games. Um, or kill, yeah, I think that's what it's called. Cl Clove, Clove, I don't know. People okay. call it different things. But uh, and it's like a forum from like the 90s. <laughs> uh, Those are the, the best, best kind. Yeah, yeah. Right? But there, uh, I don't know, there's all these like really great like threads about um, opening an arcade and like what to expect or what the issues would be. And I was taking them all very seriously. <laughs> and like one of them was like, yeah, people think these things are like piggy banks and they'll just break them open so I was like oh I can't God. have quarters in them I haven't used tokens you know and, <laughs> and that so that was another reason I went away from that name but yeah no one is they actually most people of a certain age don't even know how to even open them or that they could even open them like no one has ever given a thought to like trying to get tokens out of the machines um, which makes sense but yeah I mean it, it would be Again, you're in a bigger size place, but it would be pretty That's obvious true. if somebody yes. was just trying to like pull open the thing while you're just for sitting sure. right there. For sure. For sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just it was so funny all the the discourse on the internet about like opening an arcade. Like looking back on it now in like hindsight, it's funny. But well, yeah, I mean, you seem to pretty quickly get like a a decent little ecosystem going here, and I feel like every time I've come in. Uh, it's maybe not crowded, but it's like busy. Like there's always people coming in and out all day. Yeah, I, um, it's that's been my favorite part. Uh, like all the different like regular customers that have kind of come in. Um, like even from like day one, uh, there's a guy that has come in. He came in the very first day, and I, I've seen him every day. He's like one of my best friends now. <laughs> um, and he actually works here now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, then Mike, I mean, you, you came in quite a bit. And, yep. I mean, it, uh, uh, it pains me that I had to take Aliens versus Predator out of the arcade, <laughs> but that was, you were one of the, I, the I, only people playing yeah, it. Yeah, I did. I, I finished it, I think, the last day that you, you had it. Oh, there. that's right. That's right. Or one of the last days. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. Uh, that's such a great game. It is a great game. Um, yeah, no, the ecosystem has been great. The, it's. A, the, well, so one thing that attracted me to this spot was the street that it's on. It definitely has like a real like neighborhood feel. Yes. And there's definitely yeah. a lot of people in the neighborhood um, that kind of gravitated towards towards this place. And then they kind of spread the word to their friends. And yeah, it's been great getting to know all the different characters, we'll call them. <laughs> uh, me being one of them as well. So. <laughs> yeah, it's a very walkable area, and you do have like a really nice. What you were saying earlier about the, your your first location being underground and like nobody would see it. Like you're very public here. Like if anybody walking by or driving by is going to see this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of people just when they're sitting at the traffic light, just look over. Yeah. And, or they're picking up their Thai food from like next door <laughs> and they come in or something. So yeah, there's definitely advantages to being seen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we've talked, and I know this is what you wanted to talk about a little bit today on the show, um, about kind of the, the ecosystem of the modern arcade and like where, obviously, the heyday of the arcade is, is long past. I mean, there's there's really not, outside of your, your Dave and Buster's, your Chuck E. Cheese and yeah. the, the odd barcade, like, there really aren't many of these places left that aren't also doubling as kind of like preservation yeah. locations. Um, what do you what do you see as the the place for the arcade in the modern gaming landscape? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great question, and uh, one reason I wanted to talk about it is I thought there were like lots of different like tributaries to go down with sure. with that. Um, I mean, in some ways, I think. The reason the arcade had such a great heyday is it was kind of a babysitter for some of us <laughs> in, in a lot of ways, right? Like, I remember going to the mall and my mom would go, you know, shopping and I would be like, all right, I'm going to the arcade, right? <laughs> and we don't really live in that world anymore where no. kids just can do kind of whatever they want, which on one hand is is sad, but on the other hand, I totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as, as a... As a as a parent, yes, or a totally. relatively young child. Yes, but, uh... um, 
<laughs> but I don't know. I guess I feel I kind of feel this way about like a lot of like having having well, having been born in the the last uh, part of the analog era and then kind of now in well now living in the digital era. I kind of feel like human beings we tend to go like from one extreme to the other but yeah. then we always kind of come back to center in some ways and it really feels like we're coming back to center on a lot of those types of things especially with pop culture and media and whatnot and I don't know I, I think there is space for mid-sized arcades or mid-sized you know entertainment venues like it doesn't have to be like these huge giant uh, monstrosity type sure. of concepts but it also can be more than just you know like one you know broken down Miss Pac-Man in the corner <laughs> right uh, so I, I don't know I mean I also think like the whole esports thing is like a thing yep and but I mean we just had a Smash Brothers tournament you know right before right. this recording so that's a thing um, I mean I I guess The preservation part is interesting, but there's not a lot of people that have, or there's not a lot of entities that have the funding to do that. Right. So then what you have is you have a bunch of these cabinets that are just kind of, it, like, I don't know, maybe one person has one in their basement, or maybe there's like people that have like 20 in their basement. <laughs> it's, it's like... I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? You you have a Neo Geo machine. <laughs> I do. Yeah, actually, I I was um, I bought my arcade cabinet. Gosh, when I was like in my early twenties. Same thing. Like I I was uh, cruising around on Craigslist and somebody was getting rid of something. I think I paid like a hundred dollars yeah, for so it. Yes, this <laughs> multiple references here speak to you. Must have gotten a good deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, it was like yeah, it was like a hundred dollars or something awesome. like that. Um, and kind of the same as you, like, I was living in a small apartment, um, you know, with my girlfriend at the time. I did not have space for that. So it ended up for, like, six years or seven years, like, living in, in John's garage, our other host, John, because he had a house, like, way before I did. Um, did he have a significant other that was okay he did, with your He did not. <laughs> he did not, other. yeah. Just lived in his garage, getting filled with spider eggs. Nice. Oh, yeah. Um, spider eggs... Spiders love arcade machines. I've cleaned out so many spider eggs out of arcade. Um, yeah, when I was when I was cleaning it up, when I did finally bring it to my my house now, and I was cleaning it up, I had it open for a little while, um, so I could get into like the wiring. And I was like, oh, I got to keep an eye on that to make sure my cat doesn't climb in. And like I I had literally like turned my back for a second, and I had that thought, and I turned back around, and he was already in it, like using the wires like a hammock, like just stretched out across Amazing. them, like ah, that's plugged in. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it was it was a cool find. Um, it, it is one of those things because as much as I can get on board with the preservation, I mean that is a, a vital vital function. Um, I, I interviewed some folks for the Video Game History Museum like years oh, and years nice. ago for a research paper. Um, it's super important, but there is something kind of clinical and detached about it as well. Yeah. Like. Like, I always think it would be cool to have, you know, I, I'm a librarian and, uh, you know, we, sit, we loan out video games at my library and that's cool. And I always think, like, ah, oh, it'd be fun to have, like, a, like a just full retro game library or something like that. But it's it's also very, like, clinical and cold that way. You're like, oh, come into the library and you check it out and yeah. you go home and you play it and then you bring it back. Like what you were talking about with arcades especially there is that social aspect like it feels weird um that's why i <laughs> the the cabinet is at my house but the cartridge has been living here that's for right. a while yes um because it's like it feels weird having it just like sit there and do nothing even more so than like a video game console because it's such there's such social yeah it pieces was of literally designed to it had a purpose yeah. to be in public yes. and to be accessed by people randomly walking by yeah. for 5, 10, 20 minutes at a time. It, you know, it's also interesting, it's an interesting format to try to preserve, right, too, because like, like, let's say you did have this institution that was, their mission was to, you know, preserve every single game or every single cabinet, yeah. but 
like some of these cabinets have been turned into other games in their yeah. lifetime and um like you said like in, they're meant to be played like how, how do you what does it mean to even preserve that right. format yeah. um and what what are the goals of preserving it and you know the, you know there's lots of way, different <laughs> paths you go on with that with like emulation and everything too um but even like you know i have a few that so most of them, i try to get the original boards for most of them but i have a few like emulated emulators in some of these and is it better for me to go find you know a seven hundred dollar <laughs> PCB so I can have it complete, or is it better for me to just throw this you know thirty dollar emulator board in, in in there so that people can play it? I, I don't know. It's it's all it's all interesting. I mean the art there and there and then there's like the artwork. Some of these yeah. have like amazing artwork. Even the manuals to some of them. I mean, that's something you don't see a lot. No. They don't have a lot of value because they're not like that. Um, interesting, but is there an institution out there collecting, you know, preserving all the manuals for all yeah. of these things? Um, I don't know. There's just so much uh, to talk about with that. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's it's especially considering like how it, it, it's it's funny because I think video games, as much as they're different from film, their like arc has kind of mimicked. Film sure. in a lot of ways yeah. because I think the early days of video games they were very much viewed as kind of like disposable junk toys like you know especially arcade games it was like yeah. you get the new ones in you make all the money you can and then you toss it and you put in something else yeah. new where you know that's kind of film like if you know anything about film history there's like hundreds and hundreds of movies from like early film that are just gone because it was that thing like there was no home video market there wasn't anything so like once everybody's seen the movie and you saw the theaters you just throw it away so you can reuse the film stock or like um but now there is that like oh we want to know the history like these things have come from places there's there's interest and there's they're fun to go back and, and revisit um but especially with arcades where it is such like you know it's not a big deal Keeping a boxed Nintendo game in your house is not going to take up that much space, but like a full arcade cabinet with all the bells and whistles, like that's a significant amount of room. Yeah, and then it's like keeping just keeping the the CRTs like alive oh too. Yeah. That's like a whole thing. Yeah, um, like tube rejuvenation and like the the tools you need to do that. Like even the even the tools to rejuvenate the tubes are from the era of the of the tubes that were <laughs> right. made. Right, so. And it's like, how many people on the planet even know how to do that? Um, yeah, yeah. We, I, I think we talked about that story that I read on the, the Racket Boy forums when I had first bought my arcade. Because I, I bought, like, it's a little beat up. It's, you know, it's workable, but it needs a little, yeah. a little loving. And I remember around that same time, I was reading a story about a guy who was, like, refurbishing an arcade machine. And he he shocked himself so badly with oh, the, yes. the tube that he like he blew himself across the room and he thought he had exploded his <laughs> testicles <laughs> from the electrical shock. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and he had, he had actually like ruptured a blood vessel in his groin, which sounds also really. I yeah, guess yeah, it's, not a, as, it's not as it's not as bad, but like <laughs> not great. Um, but I remember reading that and just being like, oh, maybe I'll wait to work on this thing yeah no i mean the yeah exactly like but so from like a preservation like point of view like if you were going to make an arcade museum like is your mission to have every single cabinet and then yeah. everyone have the the correct cr not just a crt the correct crt that came with it yeah and what if we can't find those anymore and then you know fast forward like 50 60 70 years like what does that you know, generation of people that are just going to an arcade museum. What does that even look like, and what do yeah. they talk about? And you know, I don't know what's on display. You know, yeah, it's yeah, interesting. Yeah, is it is it like an archive where everybody has to like check in and put on white gloves and like you yeah. know be really careful with everything so it doesn't wear and tear? Um, you know, or is it just like a free for all? In which case, it's not going to do a great job of right. preserving. And like the white glove archival 
thing would be about the furthest thing from the experience right. of being in a real arcade. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I remember one of the earlier times I was in here, like somebody was really laying into that Spider-Man machine. I oh yeah, like, the kids uh, like love to hang off the the joysticks. Yeah, uh, yeah, which is crazy because I don't ever remember doing that. There's also some people who are very like physically aggressive in their, oh, in their movements yeah. while they're playing which I also don't agree because like really all you have to do is tap your finger right like you yeah. don't have to like put your entire like upper body into tapping yeah the they're they're not that I mean I guess there's there's some fighting games that are a little bit pressure sensitive right that, yeah, right. yeah right. yes but um but yeah most of them are not right like that <laughs> yes but I, but to be honest like they they can take it like all these parts like they're like they were made to to deal with that type of abuse. Um, it's really quite interesting. Yeah, that that is one thing where like where nowadays you know everybody's like oh you know video games are they can they're for adults they're like multimedia centers where like you know back in the day it definitely was pitched as like it's a toy and yeah. like but because of that they were designed to get roughed up by kids sure. like like all of that old nintendo super nintendo stuff is really sturdy compared to like i don't know i even look at my like playstation 5 wrong and it's like, i know right it explodes yeah yeah totally yeah no they were i mean in some ways there was everything was made more sturdy at, well, at that's, one point yeah. right? but <laughs> that's definitely true but no they're definitely there was a lot of thought put into into all of it um I mean, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, some of these are like 40, 50 years old at this point. That's, that's wild. wild. Like, going strong. I that's mean, I guess, wild, like, the man. 90s stuff. I mean, that's what's interesting, too, about, like, the, the tail end of the arcades. Like, your Soul Calibur two cabinets and, like, things that I don't necessarily remember seeing in the wild because right. they kind of just, unless you were in Japan and, you know, you're still able to see some of these things, like... You know they weren't in Oklahoma where I was growing up, but you know some of these there there are technically arcade cabinets from like the year two thousand. Oh yeah, and, yeah. and beyond, right? But yep. Yeah, there's um, <clears throat> what's it called? P PGM or something like that. Was this um, I think they're I don't know if they're Korean or Chinese, but they were making arcade games into like. I think their last one was like 2012 yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Like these really nice like 2D fighting games. Well, and... that's what's interesting about like that could happen. Like I think there's the, you can have companies making these. Like I mean, Arcade One Up is a very uh, controversial uh, thing in my opinion. Um, oh, the, the the One Up, the yeah, yeah, like yeah, the scale yeah. ones. But like I don't know. Someone was telling me about like someone that does the candy cabs like the okay like you can buy a kit to build a brand yeah. new candy cab and it's like pretty much one to one um but i don't i, I don't know like I, I wouldn't be surprised if in another 10 years there's like a way to build to build your own like authentic like one-to-one -one arcade cabinet that looks exactly like a mortal Kombat 2 you know <laughs> midway cabinet from yeah. back in the day yeah uh, yeah, but no. with like an LCD screen or something, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember um, my brother got a uh, Simpsons, one of the One Up Simpsons yeah. arcade cabinets uh, last. I think it was last Christmas, um, which was really cool. But then coming in here and playing these games, it's not quite the same. Yeah, I. Yeah, I don't know why they don't. I mean, there's a lot of difference, like scales you could make it right yeah. like why why did they choose that i mean i'm sure it had to do from a production you know mass production like right standpoint, right yeah. but i don't know i think it, they're just too small um to really have that same feel yeah i mean when i, I remember being a, a kid at the time being in the arcade like arcade machines are big like they're you're yeah. <laughs> you know as, as a little kid they were like towering over me yeah they're, um yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, some of them are very... Yeah, they're absolutely heavy. I've moved a lot of them at this point. And, <laughs> but at the same time, there, there were some smaller ones. Like, I don't know. If, I was, if someone said to me, like, hey, I want to get an arcade cabinet, like, what would you advise or whatever? And I would say, go on Facebook, 
find an empty cabinet that doesn't have anything in it but that was like a legit cabinet at one point like um like atari made some like smaller one i mean there's actually cabaret cabinets that miss pac-man and and that centipede right there are like cabaret scale okay. ones and if they didn't have a crt in it they'd be totally manageable from a weight standpoint in my opinion like yeah, the CRT, CRT is always, always the killer. Yeah, yeah, somebody the, who's moved an arcade cabinet around yes. multiple times, like it's insane yeah. the difference that that adds yeah. to it. Um, but I don't know, like <laughs> that to that that to me, that's how that's what I would, that's what I'm into, like that lived in, like broken in, yeah, like, often authentic, like feel. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Mine at home has a bunch of, like, dings and damage and stuff on it, and I, I kind of like that, because it's like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. this was, like, when things got a little rowdy at the pizza part. <laughs> right, no, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I, I like, to to be fair, though, like, you were talking about the art. It, if I had one that had, like, decent art on the side, I would probably want that kind of intact. I, I don't know yeah. if I'd want, like, scribbles and stuff on totally. it. Totally, yeah, yeah. I think there's there's a lot there's a whole like spectrum of like quality of the or the preservation of the yeah. art on the side and um, but yeah that's a huge part of it and it, it's sad to me some of the one, the ones that didn't have anything or the one when people have painted over it like yeah. why would you I don't know but. yeah yeah no mine is like a, it's it's a Neo Geo but it's in like a generic like I forget what it's called like like arcade cabinet yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just like the arcade on the side yeah you know? um so something you, you touched upon a little bit earlier kind of the social aspect of things and and that you've you know made friends like we've become friends since since you moved yeah. uh, you set this up um since you had talked before about you know the last time you were really in arcades was like 20 years ago like <laughs> like how how does this to you anyways like how does this compare like what what are you seeing now compared to back in the day i mean i do see kids in here all the time like little kids that are certainly you know were not even a thought in their parents mind at the time that yeah. this stuff was all active yeah well there's a lot of fun ways to answer this question <laughs> um, it never would have dawned on me that a I mean, it makes total sense because this, like you're talking, like kids that are like under 10, especially when they come in, they don't know what to do with the token. Uh, and, and then when you, you say, okay, you put it in here, they're still like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and the fact that you have to activate this machine by putting this other object into a slot that isn't really like even spatially connected to the part right, you're supposed to interact right. with, it's like really weird. <laughs> and they just don't get it. But then once they do get it, you know it's it's obvious and then they actually love putting the token in yeah. but um like the fact that like I, I don't ever remember thinking that was weird right it was just always yeah, like, as a kid i was just weird. like oh this is what you do and this is what happens um but the fact that there's like a whole generation of kids now that unless they have gone to a like an arcade like this they're not going to a barcade because they're not old enough but so i don't know it's just that uh like just seeing them interact with this old technology <laughs> has been fun and funny, but in a good way. Not like I'm making fun of them, right? But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, the, but on the flip side, there's like you know the teenagers and the twenty year olds that come in here. They know they know more about arcades than I do. They like they <laughs> like with the internet, you know, you can look up That's anything, true, right? Yeah. And it's like I feel like it's that way with all all media. Like they know more about music than I do, like because they they just grew up with the internet and they can look up whatever they wanted um so but i i find that um i find comfort in that yeah because it it, it gets me excited that there's a person 20 years younger than me that is so excited about this one game or this yeah you know franchise or whatever that they would go and learn all this stuff about it because that's so much better than it just dying and yeah no one knowing anything about it right so I, I I think uh, retro video games and arcades are definitely um, always going to be a point of interest uh, to us, you know, to the community, regardless of whatever age they are or how they're entering into, you know, this as a, a pastime. So I don't know. I, I've been very excited seeing how how much everyone actually really knows about it, even if it 
even if they're not from that generation. Yeah, yeah. No, that is cool. I mean, I, I think a lot of kids, again, the kid that I did Big Brothers with, he definitely was not interested at all in retro games. <laughs> like, like he liked he liked video games a lot, but it was yeah. like, you know, the modern stuff. Yeah. Um, but, but I remember, yeah, you know, when I was a kid, I was interested in things that were like older yeah. than me you know I, I would go to like thrift stores and look for like old toys and things yeah. that were like out you know ages before I was born so there, there definitely are in every generation there yeah. are kids that you know are interested in that stuff or yeah you know if some kid plays with Tears of the Kingdom and they're like oh this is really cool and like you want to go back and look into like what other Zelda games has there have there been like what yeah I was actually uh, there was a kid in here on Saturday and their mom wanted them they they'd been playing Breath of the Wild yeah. at like the Target kiosk or whatever. Oh and yeah. They wanted a Zelda game, and the the mom had remembered playing Link's Awakening back in the okay. day. Okay. Was like really pushing Link's Awakening really hard on them. <laughs> and I actually had a I had a I had the Game Boy like the DX ver- version. Oh yeah yeah. And I had the remake the Switch remake one, yeah. and I kind of put them both in front of the kid. I pulled up screenshots of the DX one. I w- and I wasn't downplaying it because the yeah. DX one is like one of my favorite games. Yeah, of all oh time. yeah, it's a great game. And uh, but I was totally thinking he was going to gravitate towards the the new remake yeah. for the Switch, and he didn't. He wanted the old Game Boy. Oh one. wow! And so that's why I sold them, and I was like, yeah, that's awesome. That is um, cool. Yeah, I think that's what's interesting about, and I think you know, hats off to the developers, like the indie game developers that you know grew up playing those games and that are making games that look yeah. and feel like that, right? Because you know, kids can. That's not. That's not like a foreign thing to them. They're just like, oh, that looks old. It's like, no, it's that. It's its own aesthetic and yeah. style. Yeah, 